So having that in mind, you can build some sort of a layered system that can do the extraction for you, that can automate the process between different techniques that you have on different devices and come up with the results on top. So, for example, different file systems. So we can have something that understands the file system itself, the file system structure, so which files in which folder, where I can find configuration files, or where I can find the storage for the device's SMS messages, the application parser that knows how to go in there and extract information from applications, both on iOS and on Android. You would know that, look, Facebook is using this database file in this path on Android and in this path on iOS to store <laughs> information, for example, uh, chat messages. And it has the same exact structure, the same tables, uh, same contents, same schema of the database. Maybe the names might change, but more or less the schema remains the same. Uh, configuration. So this is the most uh, volatile piece that you can find on mobile devices. And it's completely different between different operating systems. But still, you can have one layer at that specific point that says, look, uh, if I want to see which devices, uh, which Bluetooth devices this device is associated with, both of the operating systems have that configuration file. So the information is the same. I want to see the app devices. I want to see Wi-Fi connected networks. So the information is the same. It's just the files below it that change. So if you know where to find the files, you can parse the entire thing into a higher level and make it understandable and put it in a catalog. So the catalog on top would contain this information. It would categorize information, network information, application information, um, what else do we have? Um, configurations of the device and so on. And based on that, and based on the rules that, that you might specify in these different layers, you can come at the end, after you do all the parsing, all the translations and everything else, and you can build a timeline, which would make your life with forensic analysis on mobile devices much, much, much more easier. So, more or less, the system that we are building has this architecture. So we have, at the moment, we're accommodating Android and iOS, uh, mostly Android, uh, but iOS is coming up uh, soon. So what we have there, we have the lower level layers that can handle the file system of devices. They can do the device extraction themselves and automation possibly in the future about doing the extraction, the uh, logical and physical memory, physical dumps of the file system. Um, they can go, they can dig into that file system and say, look, this is the location where applications are stored. This is the location where the uh, wireless configuration settings are, are stored. You also have the backup parser and extractors that you can pull the backups from the devices and start doing the analysis on top with slightly different settings. Then on top of that, you have the application and configuration parsers. The application parser purely knows how each application works and how it can parse it, what known entries I have for this specific application, for example, Facebook, WhatsApp, the Android browser, the Safari browser on iOS, so on, um, and the configuration parser that understands where the operating system has all the configuration settings and such. And on top of that, you have the catalog. The catalog is just the generic way of presenting information. So I have information about the device, uh, IMEI or, uh, uh, the, uh, for example, the uh, MAC address of the Wi-Fi interface or the Bluetooth interface and so on. You've got some settings of the device. Um, 
the applications which get passed from here and there, networking information that I might have, and so on. So how can you accommodate change in this specific architecture? It's simple. You build modules. You have a module for that application, a module for a different application. You have a module for the configuration settings of Android. You stick a little version on them as well, so when the version changes, you know that that thing might have changed. I've got a newer module for that specific thing. Um, so you can define the location of the configuration files. Uh, you can define which catalog that specific thing goes into. Uh, you can define the paths to known fields. For example, I have an XML file that contains information that I want to pull out of that device. So I'm saying, this XML file, at that specific path, contains in this X path, in this XML path, that information, which is, let's say, a string, which contains the MAC address of the wireless interface, or it contains uh, that wi the Wi-Fi networks that this device was connected to. Then you've got the applications, same thing. Applications <coughs> have what? They have files, random images, data files, and databases. So you know, for example, that the WhatsApp application has a database in there that's called uh, if I'm not mistaken, main.db, main which is an SQLite 3 database, which has these tables, and in that specific table, I have a field called date, which I have to translate into, let's say, a Unix timestamp, because it's different. And then that table has the messages that were sent from, that were exchanged using this application, and then from there, go up the layers, we extract that information, and we have it in a meaningful way. Um, right, so an example of this configuration files. This is an example. So we've built the application in such a way that it could accommodate custom configurations, changes, and ways to define what you need. And in this example here is the Com Android browser application. What the higher level staff do, they can identify that that specific application, uh, sorry, they can identify the location of that specific application. And from that point, they go into this configuration file here, and they say, look, which are the known files that I have? And for example, it's a browser2.db file. So when I pass, when I, when I reach the point where I pass this file, what I'm doing is, I'm looking at this configuration. And in here it says, I have a known table called history. So there's a table in this file called history which has a field named date, uh, which is in, um, uh, it's in uh, WebKit 
timestamp, which I would have to convert into a Unix timestamp, so it, it accommodates changing stuff on uh, each field. And then from there, I'm just saying, I'm just telling the program that if you're gonna, going to parse this field, parse it as a date. So I know that in that database, in that application, uh, in, in that table, I have a field that is a date field. And from there, we can build up and come up with a timeline because we already know there is a date field there. Um, so,